Hello and welcome back and that's right today I want to continue talking about the subject of surveillance cameras It is something that we talk about on the channel I would say at least once a month on average maybe a couple of times and in the next couple of months You are going to see me deep dive a little bit more into the world of surveillance We've got a few different cameras up for review We've got a lovely little zoom that may already be live uh, with a great friend of the channel RJ But today we want to talk about a new dual lens camera from the company Anka or Ank. I've never really mastered the pronunciation. The FCD 600 is a new generation dual lens camera. Now, what is a dual lens camera? Well, real quick, that is instead of having one camera that's got one lens they're trying to kind of open up for in order to see everything within a field of view for alerts and stuff, rather than having, for example, a pan tilt zoom camera that will need to operate or be on a patrol pattern, a dual lens camera with image stitching allows you in many ways, but not perfectly, to open up the field of view. And that's very much what the FCD 600 is, or what I'm just gonna call it the Anker dual lens camera. It is two lenses, uh, a slight angle, that are able to cover, they state, 180 degrees of coverage there. Obviously, there will be a diminishing return on the edges of that field of view, but before we go you know, into the old rabbity rabbit, let's see what we get for our money. Um, in this uh, review, by the way, we're gonna be looking at the mobile software, the desktop software, with some of the camera feed, and of course, that hardware so let's see what we get we've got the standard retail box there fairly standard stuff i should also add i have already opened this i've done the filming portion of this video with the cameras already kind of in the wrong order so i have already opened this when you receive it it will probably be in slightly better polished fashion than mine we've got our user information there and uh sorry user first time setup manual is actually quite a decent little guide um isn't the normal fold up bit of paper that we're used to. We've got a large bit of foam. We have got the camera itself. Again, it is bagged a lot better than that normally. Um, that's the camera. We'll get onto the unit itself in just a moment. Um, then inside, we've also got our security sticker. Again, I'm sure people still use these, but I think these days a lot of people don't bother with the sticker and they just make sure the camera is pretty darn visible. Um, you've got your DIY template for attaching the camera to the wall. You have got your wall bracket there for mounting this device up there on the wall. You have got an, a, a PoE extension cable there. We'll talk about that in a little bit more detail in a moment. You've got your little Ethernet cover protector there that they will include. And you've got your fixings there. Again, when you get it, it won't be open. Uh, there's your wall fix in there and your bracket fixer in there. And that's really it. The camera's pretty well protected, I'd say. Nice rigid foam all the way along. We've got the unit itself, and the bracket, I would say, when I was utilising this for the reviews, a bit of muck on it from when I was using it, this is quite a, a sturdy bracket. I am going to give them credit for that. A lot of the time, uh, when you have a lot of these, particularly when you've got a factor in tampering with cameras that are set up, one area that I think a lot of, um, say, budget camera providers kind of scrimp on are these brackets, because there's no actual electronic parts inside them. All too often, you find them using plastic brackets uh, because all they've got to do is often just run the cable through sometimes or just simply have to be attached It'll be a metal base, but a flimsy plastic kind of rod that it sits on and you do find sometimes that they're really quite droopy or they can end up getting cracked or if someone just wants to snap that off They don't even need to worry about how well fixed it is down there. So it is a very sturdy bracket that this thing arrives with um, again fixings will ignore but we will talk a little bit about that extension cable there um, because the device is poe this camera again there are variations of their dual lens there which will hopefully be linked in the description but we are talking about the poe one today and when you are mounting this device it's you know mounting is with a dual lens camera is going to be more important than ever because you are trying to utilize uh, a kind of um, elimination of the whole having to pan or tilt utilizing a camera like this. You want that full field of view. I believe it's 81 degrees height and 108 degrees widespread uh, horizontal coverage there. And, um, again, when you are setting it up, you are really going to have to make considerations there for your uh, PoE power input there, whether you're going to be utilizing uh, DC to PoE uh, injectors or you're going to be using standard class cat cabling there. But that's enough talk about the content. We want to talk a little bit about the design of this dual lens anchor camera.
so straight away it's quite a nice looking device that if we bring that close to the camera then get the thumbnail sorted we're able to see straight away that not only have we got the two separate lenses quite well defined there on the front and this is a six megapixel ultra hd camera but on top of that they've put the base lighting there and the um, ir sensors there underneath each of the lenses now i will say the chassis design i'm not wholly in love with the fact that it's you hear that it's plastic all the way around it is um ip66 protected there in terms of weatherproofing but still nonetheless i kind of hoped it would be a metal external there i'm sure the internals are a lot more rigid and there isn't really any cavities there above and beyond the base uh, microphone there that you might be able to make out of my light uh, wasn't going nuts apart from that there isn't really any cavities where water could get in but i'm still not wholly in love with this camera external being completely plastic but at the price point that it's arriving at about 120 you know the 130 odd dollars or uh, you know pounds local currency conversions etc um I shouldn't really complain too much about that there is additional sensors and a uh, mic input there on the front and of course that's the audio out there on the base if we look at the attaching cables there there is a huge range of power inputs there for us to be playing on with notwithstanding the poe combined rj45 connector there as well as um, a power over ethernet adapter um, I would say having these extra ones is quite unusual and arguably kind of to their benefit that they've gone to the extra mile of including those power adapters. Now, how many of them uh, correspond to their own DVRs uh, or MVRs and they've included for that sake or are just covering as many bases as they can in the industry? I can't really confirm. But I will say that is an unusually large number of external connectors there. But no reset, I've noticed. No reset key on there which again good or bad depending on the security setup or where the camera is located whether you think that's a good thing or a bad thing now regarding output um resolution maximum is 3632 by 1632 and that's a up to 60 megabit uh bit rate there so again you can go right the way down to the, the, the kilobits if you want there it also uh has got dual stream support with the main and the substream and that it covers both h.264 and 265 more on that uh, on another video coming very very soon 20 frames per second output over that six megapixel uh, coverage there at 180. Now, that's going to be really important because when we're covering that wide range, and this is something, again, full credit to you, RJ, if you're watching this, when we're talking about pixel density over coverage, the wider the area you're covering, if you can't maintain a high enough pixel density over that area, the result you will find is that when you start operating zoom, because this is digital zoom, not optical zoom, the result is you've got less pixels to play with where if you'd had two separate cameras running even a lower uh, megapixel rate and, uh, and uh, pixel density across the two cameras than this because they might be dealing with a smaller area of focus that gives you a larger pixel density again rj thank you very much for updating me on that one um but above and beyond that, at the base, you've also got the reset button inside there rather than on the cables. And you've got an SD card slot there for a 256 gig slot there inside. Uh, there is an inbuilt alarm as well, a 95 decibel alarm. I don't include that in this review because I don't hate my neighbours. But take my word for it, it is, des it is deafening. And you can there's 12 different types of alarm you can use. Um, it's also got ambient noise um cancellation something i don't haven't seen a lot in different cameras by the way and although it's really hard to show it in this review i will uh, later on in the software you will see me drop through those options and it's nice to have that scaling of background ambient noise because not all of our situations for how we're going to deploy these are the same so i'm really pleased that that exists that if you are tinkering with it and, and tinkering is going to be a key word during the software to talk about later on it's nice to have that ability to scale it to your own individual environment and not just be locked in on individual presets um it does have also uh, obviously night vision there's color night vision as well and it covers up to uh, 20 feet uh, internally with that 
um, when it comes to uh, adapting the uh, uh, the light quality there, uh, the exposure quality, there's a huge range of configurable options in the software, for good and for bad as well, which will make sense later on in terms of what it is capable of, uh, in terms of scaling the picture quality and even adapting uh, the night light as well and how this reacts with the night and day switch there's scheduled day night switching there there is auto uh, put into there or you can just affix it to one or the other if you choose and again alongside color night vision when needed so it's nice to have that amount of control for a real ip camera enthusiast and people that know their shizzle but at the same time there is not a great deal of explanation in that software that you'll see and also uh the reset to defaults isn't as common as some of us might like now talking about what this thing can do there is an onboard uh, um, ai component but again we aren't talking deep level dva we're not talking deep you know um license plate recognition or maintaining a record of facial recognition there isn't anything like that what you've got is person detection vehicle detection i believe the beta level pet detection there but it does scale up and above beyond that. Some of their competitors like Reolink it includes uh, like line crossing, intrusion detection, entrance exit detection as well. There isn't people counting because again, that's more of a DVA thing. But at least you've got that ability to draw lines. And there is even the option in the software to either see the camera natively via one of the two streams or apply all of the barriers, areas, uh, regions of interest, all of that on screen. It will look like the opening uh, i think i mentioned this later on of the transformers animation with all of the boxes on screen but at the same time the ability to switch from a native blank canvas camera view feed to an overarching single view which shows all of your existing areas of effect and lines of intrusion and uh, particularly monitored areas is a nice touch although it will appear intimidating for some users out there but i think that's enough talking about the hardware and the build you want to learn about the software so let's look at the software for the mobile app and the desktop app now okay so here we are on the desktop of my mobile phone and the first thing we're going to look at is the anchor vision mobile application if i pull down from the top you're already going to see notwithstanding the screen recording software there that i've already got a bunch of different alerts now i'm not going to show too many of the alerts in this video because unfortunately i had to disable them because they were just overloading the screen uh, but i will come back to some of those alerts later on there but for now this is what you see when you log into the anchor vision app unfortunately i've only got the one camera on the available view there i mean the app, the app is fairly standard there it's all fairly normal stuff um i will say um and later on in the video i will show you the desktop interface here of using the anchor camera and i'll tell you right now that i'm kind of uh, uh, at odds with the mobile app because i actually like the ui of the mobile app as i quickly mute that there before there's any feedback on the mic um however with the mobile application and i know you're watching a squished version of the dual lens camera here what i will say straight away is the the uh, mobile app doesn't feel as feature controlling rich as the desktop browser experience but at the same time with the desktop browser experience the desktop browser Although it lacks the polish of the mobile, it's just supremely more controllable overall. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just leave that camera there on screen and just give you some idea about the picture quality we're going to go with there. We're going to go with the HD mode. Unfortunately, I can't rotate the screen while we're doing this here. So we're just switching the camera into HD mode there. And I'm just going to nip out and walk in front of that camera there. Get ready to see some of those alerts.
Now, as you probably saw as I was going through the recording, you saw me going back there, and no doubt there was a bunch more alerts there, something I am going to have to disable. You may also have heard on the microphone, I guess, uh, my cat making its way into my office as soon as I did that. So I apologise if she started gnawing on the camera. But uh, the user interface you can see here on screen, had we had more anchor cameras, we can add more into the control deck there. Obviously, we can do the usual zooming stuff there. And again, I know this isn't the ideal scenario there to give you some idea of the depth of what this camera can do. And if we try to rotate the lens there, unfortunately, I can't show that effectively here on the uh, UI, as you can see, utilizing the mobile app and this screen recording software. Now, there's lots of different functions available. Unfortunately, some of these, like pan, tilt, zoom, which aren't supported by the FCD 600, unfortunately are not going to be available there. You can do zoom mode there and kind of manual zooming in if you choose. On top of that, if you want, you can go ahead for that noise reduction. So if you do have background noise, you know, if this is going to be a high traffic environment, that sort of thing, that's something that's worth bearing in mind that you've got that control very easily there on the app if you need to counteract against other stuff to use that noise cancellation uh, functionality of the camera. Again, localized capture, not a very nice alert there. Did you see that? That was quite ugly, that one we had on screen there. The same goes for a localized recording if we choose. We can go ahead and add that at a whim. Then, of course, we've got audio out. So we can go ahead and choose that audio out for the two-way audio functionality. And that will allow us to talk out of the camera. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to kind of uh, adhere more to that because we're only seeing the client side. We've got the mute there. If you want to get some of that local background noise included there, which we've removed. And there is the siren, which I'm not going to play, but take my word for it. It is ungodly loud. Uh, now, if we go to the top right, we can look at some of the other little bits and bobs here. If we want to add a new camera, share this camera via an existing 3D barcode or link, uh, they will need the Anchor app in order to access those. Um, carrying on, while my cat jumps on the table trying to annoy the hell out of me, we can go into the settings of this camera. Now, the settings, again, this is where I think this app starts to fall down a little bit. As we can see, it's already mentioning we're having a slight network drop there while we're doing some of the stuff. The camera is still live, however. But again, we're seeing a slight network drop while I'm navigating some of these options. And this is something that happened a couple of times during my testing there. Even though my Wi-Fi network hasn't changed, there was a couple of occasions where when I was going through some of the individual settings, it just seemed to uh, just hang ever so slightly. And I think there is definitely some optimization that could stand to be done in the background there. Um, but again, going back into those settings, we can have a little look. Now, the, one of the things that I didn't find particularly intuitive about this is I would like a big button there at the top right. And when I go into settings, what I want is this settings menu right here. But I have to go two layers deep for that, which I know is a small complaint, but I wasn't a big fan of that. Um, there is the option, of course, to allow encryption at all times. But, I mean, again, most of these things I would have preferred to be, you know, built into a larger configuration option here on the mobile application. If we go into the settings menu, while my cat continues to try to get in front of the lens here, we can go for some of the standard settings there. And this is where things get a little deeper. But I will say, despite the less glossy desktop user interface that you're going to see in a moment, I overall thought uh, it was handled better on the desktop. Um, and again, all the settings options are pretty much what you expect. You can go for those localized access points there. You can have failover to a degree, assign different port functionality and security, and indeed that multicast uh, functionality, not something that's particularly new. It's still nice to have inside this camera supported. And the advanced settings there, whether you want to play with some of the background share and distribution of the camera there. We'll be trying to do some NAS testing very soon, and that will be included in a large degree when we start looking at the comparison with that RioLink uh, Duo camera that we talked about before. Now, moving forward into the audio video category, that is where we can play with the stream. There is that heightened resolution that we've already talked about earlier on with this camera supporting up to that quite high uh, resolution with the frame rate allowing us to go all the way up to 20 frames per second if we choose to, even at that high um, uh, resolution rate. Again, choosing whether we want to go H.264, 265. Nice, but again, 
that's not new and i wish it had been presented just a little bit clearer particularly letting people know what a lot of these options are um and again a uh, region of interest control there is available but another thing i encountered a couple of times while using the mobile app and again this wasn't consistent so it might have been an issue with my mobile i encountered a few times using the mobile app when i couldn't get the uh, main GUI to display on screen. So say for example, I went into the smart events, something I'll be going to a little bit more detail on, on the desktop, just periodically, although I could draw the areas of effect, it didn't always display the camera feed. Uh, but overall, I'd say the controls for, you know, basic to slightly intermediary controls are reasonable on the mobile application. But I would say that the desktop app is where the full control is if, a little you know a clunky and a bit uh, year 2000 in design so let's flick over to that desktop gui to give you some idea what i'm talking about okay so we've made our way over to the desktop here as mentioned and as you can see we're not running on the highest fidelity frame rate there largely because of obs that we're using down here in order to make this recording today um i will say again when it comes to controlling some of those AI services, so if we immediately flick over to those, we can use the configuration tools here in order to start playing with some of those. So if we go for the smart events, for example, as you can see, I've already started assigning a number of these events. Uh, there, were, there were a few little graphical, I would say, bumps on the road. So for example, if we try and set up a new uh, region of interest there so if we clear the existing one and this is going to be for a nice simple intrusion detection zone there so detection area say i want to make sure that this area here if someone intrudes into this area so they come over the back wall then i want that area to be an area of intrusion detection and as you'll see on the bottom right of the screen shortly that has been saved it's that quick and easy to set it up along with creating a schedule for it and how you want to receive those alerts whether you want to utilize uh, the audible warning immediately from the camera whether you want to um, upload it uh, to additional storage so additional alerts as clips you can go ahead and create and you can also create kind of a systematic walk, um, walkthrough of an A and then B scenario there. And the same goes for if you go for the line crossing. I've already created a couple of areas of counting uh, for, or well, not so much counting, sorry, people counting and, you know, license plate registration is not available here. But again, pretty much the same regions, uh, same rules apply. And if you do want to create a new region, so if we go for that fourth one there, clear the existing area, create ourselves a region of uh, a detection area there so say we go for uh, and this is going we'll go for line crossing sorry so if we go for line crossing create a brand new line crossing area within that field of effect and i'm going to do it so if it can count in it can notice in both directions or if i choose to i can say that only notice if someone covers from the b to the a area there you can click that again not super glossy but it does work as you've seen from the alerts from earlier on uh, region entrance detection and the same goes for region exit you can choose whether someone stays in an area and moves out of it so you can use this kind of on the fly or go ahead and create one for you when you need to so if we clear that existing bulk area and we create ourselves a new standing area to so say we go for this one here by this set of chairs we can go ahead and create this area of region entrance and the same goes for region exit obviously that is the opposing opposite of that and you can customize the fidelity of that whether you want to include humans or vehicles uh, as you may have clocked when i had my chasing my cats around uh, then you may have noticed that animal detection was not included there of course the basic level of controls um, are accessible there for motion detection so it goes for video tampering if the camera gets moved around the alarm input alarm output the exceptions if you choose and what you want to happen at certain events and triggers are all kind of factored in there and yes this does look a bit old school and dated and i kind of wish they'd revamp this uh, the way real link did but it's still a very good setup and all of the configurations option uh, configuration options this one individual camera are clearly present for us here so this you know not really anything i'm going to complain about there because i like what i'm seeing overall um, audio visual controls with the mainstream you can flick between that mainstream and the substream and again the substream you can alter a lot of those recording values as well 
to the individual recording quality and the frame rate to make sure that that's secondary stream. Um, so you could have like the secondary stream being used for your normal recording, but the primary stream being used for the main captured recordings. Again, that does require a little bit of bespoke setup, but that option is relatively available. Um, if we go to the network settings, as mentioned earlier on, it's the same information, but I think it's just presented a little better. I wish there was a lot more indication, particularly for novice users that may not want to open up camera access externally. I wish there was more attention being made to explaining what these variables are. Um, but still, it, they've been presented a little better here on the desktop than they have on the mobile. And these are fairly obvious stuff here. And of course, the image stitching that we talked about there, which we're not going to configure with, is largely to do with that whole two cameras being stitched over the middle there. Um, so if we go to the local there, and that's just giving us what our local access point there you may you may need to download the plugin based on your individual setup there but again with the live view parameters and you know basically the normal local um, browser based access here, what the output is what you are seeing this is where you would disable or re-enable it also if we enable rules for example and we've enabled the pos information already uh, but what you can do is just change a lot of those settings to be better suited to how it's being accessed there overall on your local system. So now, now I've enabled some of those settings, you can see that all of the smart alerts that I created earlier on are now presented on screen. You don't have to have this, but if you want a real understanding of what you're seeing on screen, simply going into that configuration option again, you see those slight lag delays there and changing some of those variables there with the POS um, uh, configuration and options and everything on screen being visible, that is why you end up with a live view that looks like the opening to the original Transformers cartoon. Um, so when it comes to the general GUI, it is quite windy today. You can tell that greenhouse has had that um, polythenol cover just ripped off and the camera in the wind there is getting shaken around. But you've got the usual configuration options here on the right hand side, which are not hugely useful for a non-pan tilt zoom camera weapon to patrol patterns and stuff like that or there's no access to some of the extra hardware options but if we go to the general settings there that's where we can do a lot quicker flick between a lot of those options and the preset configuration options there overall um overall i would say the controls are what I would expect, particularly when you're looking at the price point of this camera knocking around. At the moment for $129, I think we can largely ignore that 159 there uh, in most locations. But overall, I would say the controls for this camera are pretty darn good. You're going to need to have it quite high up to really take advantage of that 180 degree viewpoint. So what I'm going to do now is just walk across the fields of view just to give you guys an understanding of what happens when we move through each of the areas of effect. So I'll just be right back in two seconds. And chances are you may have heard also my phone going off with any alerts there in the background because I can't recall whether I put it on silent or not. But overall, I'm pleased with what I'm seeing here in this camera. I really am. I, I think for the price point, when you are looking at the build quality of this camera and the fact that a lot of this is being, you know, localized on the SD card internally, I'm liking what I'm seeing. I just wish just a little bit more that this uh, feed could really, you know, be revisited with a redesign there. If we go to the software section of the company's download center, you can find out a little bit more about what they've got available, but they've definitely prioritized that mobile application more than the localized um, access stuff. Of course, the next big question is... 
of course, the next big question is, can you use this anchor with a NAS drive? And I've got to say right now, the results are kind of a yes, kind of a no. What do I mean by that? Well, as you can see here on the Synology DS920 running DSM 7.2, we've got Surveillance Station installed. It's on the same network. And if we scan our local area network, you will find that as it scans all the way through, it will find more than one camera. And there, right in the middle, is the i51dw that is the model id internally for this camera and as you can see it has appeared on onviv so if we go ahead and click next and we try to include that camera and again i will add just showing you here on the live view let's have a look because we're utilizing too much resources there is the camera feed i'm sure we're seeing some awful images there while the camera's running let's get it on its um primary there while we're trying to run the camera using up all of our resources to not only show a camera feed not only show me in the bottom of the screen but also running obs there in the background so we can't really be critical too much of the camera there because we're running just too many uh, embrace uh, really aggressive resources being consumed there but making our way over to surveillance station there if we put in the login credentials for this camera can have already created them we can go ahead click authenticate and as you can see, it is suggesting there is an issue uh, with the camera. It's under credentials and the, uh, have been saved and will try to be used later on. And we can re-authenticate, but before we do that, it's worth touching on the reason why this is difficult. And a lot of that is to do with um, this camera being connected in the settings. And we've already talked about a little bit on this camera, just how configurable this is for good or for bad. So, um, you know, Anchor themselves have issued several guides on this, some of them within just a few months old that detail how exactly you connect cameras to NAS systems or existing NVR uh, systems that utilizing OnViv and even a dedicated one to connect it to NAS systems. But what it comes down to when we're going to live view is those configuration tools. And there's just by default, a lot of those open-ended things that you would need to enable uh, network-wise and open the system up to be found by NAS are disabled so you really have to dig deep into the integrated protocol to enable onviv this is disabled by default and also creating an onviv user credential list there alternatively whether you're utilizing an encrypted network with https uh, and using self-signed certificates it's not that straightforward to add it it is addable but doing so does require a lot of marketing around there and it does by the way still come up as two separate cameras there it doesn't come up as one single field of view maybe that'll change in the firmware update because i know it was a matter of discussion for the real link camera but yeah when it comes to nas compatibility the answer of whether this camera can be used with nas is both yes and no yes if you're prepared to take the time to dig through a lot of these protocols in the advanced settings which again may undermine in an existing network but if you want it to work out the box on a NAS system, like a few camera brands out there and just be picked up on OnViv, that is not going to be the case. Even if you go into Surveillance Station to add a camera manually, because I've tried to do it manually as well. So if you add to the manual settings there, there isn't a huge amount of flexibility there. And even when you go for the brand, ANC isn't there. They're not listed on the range of cameras that are available on that brand list where there may be preset protocol. So unfortunately, when it comes to NAS compatibility, as I say, the answer is both yes and or no. So what do I think? Well, I'll tell you straight away, I like this camera. I do not think it is built for the pure novice. I would say, although I talked about a lot of cameras on this channel before, and I've talked about what a lot of these cameras can do, I would be slightly hesitant for someone that doesn't know what they're doing to go for this camera. It's not as chewable and user-friendly and easy as a Rio Link, but I don't think it's trying to be that. I think there's definitely a little bit of clash uh, when it comes to all the different applications running and their extent and the GUI and I think there is inconsistencies across each of the individual client apps uh, for desktop or mobile devices or via your web browser but what I will say this device gives you is a huge amount of control I think they may be overstretched the camera capabilities across this whole 180 line and the stitching between the two lenses although pretty seamless uh, uh, straight away does still mean that what you're getting is 
two bolted cameras side by side where in some scenarios where a more consistent or sharper flow would be better achieved with two separate cameras rather than stitching them together into one but at the same time I can't deny that this isn't a very customizable feed and if you're prepared to put the extra time in you will be able to develop a camera uh, feed setup and surveillance setup in your own local environment that is far far more tailored to your own setup in terms of noise uh, control in terms of regional interest and just generally being able to tailor what the camera is seeing and the quality of the feed to your own setup with this than you can do on a number of comparatively priced cameras in the market right now so again know what you're doing this is not as much of a novice camera as you might think but if you're prepared to put the time in you will get some decent output from it just remember there's more of a learning curve with this than other cameras on the market right now but this has been the anchor fcd 600 what do you guys think let me know in the comments we will of course be comparing this camera with the rio link very very soon this is the real link geo and i look forward to comparing these two cameras on a video very very soon but apart from that what do you guys think let me know in the comments i'm sorry we didn't do a lot of night vision coverage on this video we just didn't really have the setup where we were to take advantage of it what we did do with night vision because we didn't have the widest area of effect it didn't really come across great enough, but I will try to address that in a future video. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. There are links in the description to where you can get hold of this camera if you are interested in, in buying it from Amazon or their own site. Again, use them, ignore them, it's up to you. As well as links to other guides talking about the subject of surveillance with NAS and others. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.